A butterfly chrysalis connects two fundamentally different ways of living. It is both a bridge and a workshop where one type of organism is transformed into another. The magnitude of this transformation has been compared to a Model T Ford that suddenly encases itself within a garage. Inside, most of the car breaks down into fragments of metal, rubber, and glass. These pieces then reorganize themselves into components more complex than any that previously existed in the Model T. After several days, the garage door bursts open and a radically different mode of transportation lifts off into the sky. Now, an analogy like that is pure whimsy. But even if it were somehow possible, I don't think turning a car into a helicopter would be nearly as impressive as the actual transformation that takes place inside a chrysalis. From the moment the chrysalis is formed, caterpillar tissues are destroyed and then recycled to help build wings, compound eyes, reproductive organs, and navigational systems of stunning beauty and efficiency. Yet despite the importance of cell death in the chrysalis, the origin of the process defies the basic logic of natural selection. One of the fundamental requirements of natural selection is reproduction you've got to be able to make copies of yourself, in particular of your genes. You've got to be able to pass them on. But a chrysalis, unless it represents a bridge to something yet to come, is really a casket. If you're a caterpillar, you're entering your own grave. Turning most of your body into a molecular soup would be suicide. A caterpillar, unless it makes it through to the adult, is no good because it can't reproduce. You're not going to have offspring, and so you're a dead-end street evolutionarily. So it wouldn't be any benefit at all to kill yourself unless you've got a hidden plan up your sleeve. You know, like, okay, I know I can go ahead and commit suicide because there's a new me waiting to happen. <laughs> the caterpillar is not going to enter the chrysalis without simultaneously knowing, I've got a plan for getting out of this. I'm heading towards the adult butterfly. I'm going to reconstitute these tissues in the adult form, emerge, and go on my way. But that's not how natural selection operates. It can't look into the future and somehow anticipate what an evolving organism is going to need in a week or a month or a thousand years from now. So if the first caterpillars were evolving into existence, Without foresight, it's highly unlikely natural selection would retain a destructive process like cell death. 